Okay, so today we are going to be looking at two scripting files from the Orange uh, Python repositories. And the two that we're looking at are roc.py and domain1.py. And first we're going to take a look at domain1.py. And this is a very simple file. As you can see, the description shows that we read from the data set. And what we're looking to do is take the attributes and class names from that data set. This is considered pre-processing, and it uses imports-85, which is a library. So we're going to import orange. Then in the next line, we set the file name to be imports85.tab. Data is orange example table of the file name. And we're going to print what the file name includes, the number of attributes, and the class variable names, which are shown here, file name, length of attributes, which is how many there are, and the data.domain class var.name is the class variable name. Finally, we print the attribute names and indices where the range of domain attributes, we print each domain attribute and the respective name. And uh, that is just a very simple file, and we use it in almost every single widget in Orange to pull the attribute and class variables out of a data table. So for our second, we are looking at roc.py, which is uh, specifically about making an ROC curve. Um, and what we're also interested in is determining the area under the ROC curve. So uh, we see here that uh, there's also some cross-validation here, which is, as it says, for uh, educational purposes to estimate uh, the area under the ROC curve and make sure that the way we're doing it has some validity or cross-validating uh, with other methods. So we're going to import orange and orange tree, and we're going to define the area under the ROC function here. And what it does is it takes the classifiers, and what we're doing is the ROC curve, what it is, is a measure of sensitivity. And on the x-axis, we have the number of uh, false positives, so the number of uh, incorrect classifications. Um, and then on the y-axis, we have the number of correct classifications. And the ROC curve, if the line of the ROC curve is exactly 1, then we have no discriminative ability. We have very little sensitivity to being able to discern any sort of pattern or signal from the noise of data. And the higher values of the ROC curve, which is uh, in normal statistics is called D prime, represents the sensitivity or the ability of our machine learning technique to be able to discriminate a pattern or a signal out of noise. And we can see here that uh, this just calculates the correct versus incorrect and produces a ROC curve and then measures the area under that ROC curve. So we have our cross-validation function here to check that uh, we're doing it well. And we set the training data and the test data to be uh, subsections of our full data because since this is a supervised, uh, since we're testing a supervised learning method with ROC curves, we need to divide the data uh, into those groups. And then this tests a Bayes learner against a tree learner against a majority learner down here. And then finally, down here, we compute the accuracies of each of those methods and uh, print the area under ROC for each of them. So that is the ROC. It's a very useful function for determining your the accuracy and sensitivity of your learner, especially if you're going to do something like this, where in this last section we compare multiple methods on the same data. Uh, and that's all. Thank you very much.